let's let's begin this un- unknown conversation thank you everybody thanks for the love we're going to have david soon and then we're going to begin with this uh, today's unknown conversation hello david hi hey. how are you i am so good so excited to have you can you hear me i can hear you great can you hear me i can hear you completely fine and so excited to have you thank you so much for coming live I cannot physically welcome you to India but this is you know the digital welcome the best I can do for you coming to India. Oh, I love India and my one of my last trips was to Vidadora and to Mumbai. Uh Jake and I both visited and helped the entrepreneur program there in India. Oh wow, that's really exciting. When was that? It was in uh late February, so right right before everything got shut down here in America. Oh this year. Oh yeah, this year. Oh wow, that's so amazing. I didn't know that. But um I wish I knew you then and we could have met, but of course there will be time in the future and um I'm really really excited to have you. So without wasting much of time, your precious time today, I want to first ask you and I know you've probably recited this to many people before, but just in brief if you could tell us a little bit about your story as an entrepreneur. your story as the path you are now on your journey to share us a little bit about you sure so you know my journey is one about my relationship with money uh i grew up with no money at all six kids and a single mom used to work two jobs and pack my dinner in a paper bag just so we could eat and uh i wanted to be rich to buy my mom a house and a car so i went on an entrepreneurial journey my mom wanted me to be educated wanted me to be a doctor or a lawyer He used to say doctor lawyer of failure. I actually ended up in law school. But when I graduated, I decided to be an entrepreneur. I decided to sell legal research online in 1992. And by 1995, wow. our company sold for 3.4 billion dollars and I went to the Silicon Valley where I worked in the wireless proxy service space and raised hundreds of millions of dollars and then became the CEO of the world's first smartphone. uh the windows c device called the pc e phone and uh from there became a true entrepreneur vc funded companies and uh built companies and real estate and stocks all types of ventures and eventually i met lee steinberg the most notable sports agent in the world jay maguire the movie was named after him and uh through that i built my own marketing and media company the last few years i built my own brand so I'm on a mission to empower over a billion people in the world to be happy by making money, helping people and having fun. And so I've created a TV show called Elevator Pitch. My podcast is The Playbook. Uh I do free trainings every Friday and the replays are on The Playbook and YouTube. All are, of my content is free to help people empower them just to be happy. My formula of happiness is to make a lot of money to help a lot of people and have a lot of fun with your life to enjoy the consistent every day persistent without quit pursuit of your potential. Well, wow, that's a that's a very 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 beautiful journey of yours and very impactful in so many ways and you know there's a lot of money coming into your life as i can hear but also a lot of giving away of that money which i think a lot of people miss out on their journeys in many ways it's like they go on this journey of making money but they forget to kind of get back and kind of create this impact where they're not just financially um you know lifting uplifting other people but also financial uh just uplifting humanity in general and i think that's that's a really amazing thing to hear from you um so i just want to ask you uh, you know these are very challenging times and you know but as an investor as an entrepreneur what are the opportunities you you have witnessed in these times compared to the other times you've seen so you mentioned you know the 1990s where the internet boom happened and you launched your company and you did all these amazing things and now you've launched a media company which is incredible and with social media going there's obviously a lot of opportunity for media so where do you see the opportunities with all the challenges that we're seeing in today's time great question with great change comes great opportunity and what i found is to simplify how do we take advantage of that opportunity and the first thing that we need to do is understand ourselves what we control our own capabilities and what are capabilities those include our skills that we have our knowledge 
of what we have and what we do and who we know. And then also one of the capabilities we have is our desire. Uh, you know, the people who are most successful have a desire that they must be what they can be, that they're resilient, that they live in a world of try me, not why me. There's no victim in their life. They don't live in a world of not enough or even a world of just enough where they're buying things they don't need to impress people they don't like. Abundant people mm. live in this world of try me where there's enough of everything for everyone. And so when we're in these compressed times of uncertainty, when you have accelerated change, the best thing to do is look at your own capabilities, your skills, your knowledge and desire and see how they're synergistic or supplementary to what's doing well now. See how your capabilities are synergistic or supplementary to what's stabilized now. And then mm. you can also see how your capabilities are synergistic or supplementary to what you think will do very well in the future. One thing about compressed uncertainty and accelerated change is the pendulum swings at a great a distance, meaning things that get beat up really bad right now will also recover mm. exponentially. So there's huge margins mm. for millionaires to be made in buying things that are oversold and selling them mm. when they're overbought. In other words, buying things when they're low and selling them when they get back high. And so you can use the emotional pendulum in order to effectuate greater margins and, great, and greater profits by understanding the three realms of it business. At all times, there's companies that do well. At all times, there's companies that are stable. And at all times, there's companies that are on huge emotional roller coaster swings of the pendulum. Knowing your capabilities and how they're synergistic and supplementary to each one of those realms are the keys to success. It's the stag and stabilization of your own economy that allows you to take and maximize the advantage of each three of those realms. Mm. Well, very interesting. So I'm going to ask you a question pertaining to what you said, uh, which also ties into kind of um, you know what I want people to learn from you, especially young entrepreneurs, is um, you know your what you're saying is as an investor, you know, it's time, it's a really good time kind of stabilizing economy is going to stabilize and something good can come from this in the long term. But in terms of sports, sports industry, how do you see the sports industry changing pertaining to what you're doing in the sports industry? Because, you know, sports industry is a lot about physical contact and with everything that's going on at the time, do you think, what kind of opportunities do you see in sports industry in particular? And what do you think for young entrepreneurs who are watching this video and who will be watching this video again, do you think they can take away from this and start a company today with 10 years from now, they can say, you know, we watched this Instagram live and got this idea from David and it's now worth millions of dollars. Well, you know, what's great is sports has been around for a really long time. It's a great backdrop to business. It has exponentially grown throughout the years. For thousands of years, sport has exponentially grown. And so utilizing sport as your backdrop to your capabilities, the backdrop to the monetization of what you want to do. I think in these times, it's a great time to start a business. Uh, you know, there's, mm. I separate the stabilization into two periods of time. One is pre-vaccine and the other will be post-vaccine. Uh, and so mm -hmm. for live events, we will not have mass gatherings until we have a vaccine. If you think yep. somehow this is uh, not true, then go ahead and put your capabilities towards that. But I'm gonna tell you mm -hmm. uh, two things that I know to be true. One, that COVID is an accelerator of change. And the changes mm -hmm. that were occurring in sports where we were moving to a stage theory. A stage series said that it doesn't matter where the uh, actual game was being played or the event was being held. It was more about how did you capture that game or event? How did you modify the game or event? Where did you amplify or distribute the game or event? And how are you perpetuating the content from the event so that people can binge watch it or rewatch it or reuse the evergreen portion, the inspirational, aspirational portion of the content? That's been accelerated. Mm. So mm. Uh, if you want to separate, you know, pre-vaccine and post-vaccine, the stage theory content of capturing, modifying, amplifying, and perpetuating, each of those 
have a variety of businesses that can be applicable and profitable at all times. It's just been accelerated. It'll be valuable right now, pre-COVID, a, a pre-vaccine and post-vaccine. But, you know, there are mass gatherings that will take place again. We will have huge Olympics and World Cups and all types of cricket matches and Eden Gardens, whatever it may be. We will have those again, po post-vaccine, we will have those. The difference is, you know, are you going to take advantage of the content today of the capture, modify, amplify, and perpetuate? Or are you gonna prepare for the future post-vaccine when we have mass gatherings again and seeing how this new blend of digital viewership with live viewership can be monetized and as well as maximized in a business opportunity. Uh, and so that's how I'm looking at it. I'll give you one good example. You talked about kids that say, you know, I'm looking, you know, gambling is an area that is heavily beat up right now. Uh, in America alone, we had 20 states in the last 18 months legalize sports gambling. Gambling is one of the oldest businesses and most successful businesses throughout history. Gambling is a business that is statistically based and creates profit again and again and again. But because it's a mass gathering business, meaning people do it in casinos and sports books and hotels, and you need to have mass gathering events to bet on, that when this post vaccine occurs, it has the pendulum swung so far the wrong way that it's going to swing back the other way so this is a classic example is if you have capabilities that are synergistic or supplementary to the gambling industry or the fantasy industry you could be preparing right now for a huge margin a huge margin of millionaires that could change your life wow very interesting it's funny that you mentioned eden gardens in kolkata um so you've been there i've been there i've been to a, a game uh, there and uh, i did work there for two and a half years in calcutta Incredible, um, incredible. Well, I'm really excited to hear all this and I'm excited to see how the sports world changes. And, you know, I, I'm a sports fan. I love sports. They've always been part of my life. And um, coming back, coming more to some personal questions in terms of what's David, you know, what's David's take on kind of pursuit of happiness? Like what for you, you know, you're, 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 You've been through a lot. You have a lot of experiences in life. You're really excited about the changes. You're excited to see the media industry change, especially in the sports segment with everything you have said in terms of how uh, we're going to see the shift of how we're going to capture things and how we're going to showcase things. This is all great. This is all, you know, amazing. But what is your take on pursuit of happiness? Like what these times of Corona, how have they given you the perspective to look in words and bring this sense of happiness for yourself. What is what does that mean for you? I'm asking you this as a yogi, yeah. uh, not as a not as a sure. not as an influencer. Just yeah. As so a yogi. you know, there is no pursuit of happiness. Happiness is the pursuit. And so, what I've learned mm -hmm. to do is to enjoy the consistent every day, persistent mm -hmm. without quit, pursuit of my own potential. And in order to do that, I need to do five things. One, I need to take inventory of my values every day, personal, experiential, giving and receiving values every single day, not being afraid to be a, a hypocrite, not being afraid to say that I've learned and I've changed and I've grown and I've made mistakes and I've forgiven myself yeah. and others. I also need to ask and attract. I need to ask other people in person on the phone via email and social media how I can be of service or of value to provide happiness to them, but also knowing that everyone's a sponsor or a power sponsor of mine, not a, an, a, a gatekeeper or, or a resistance. So asking people, do you know anybody that can help me? I see Evan Carr, Michael there. He's someone that's of great assistance to me. So thank you, Evan. Do you know anyone that can help me get more people to come to my trainings on Friday? Then third. And his, book is, uh, his book is about built to serve, right? So it's all about serving other people. Exactly. It's a great book, by the way, and it's aligned with my personal experience of giving and receiving values. But the third thing is to be a student of our calendar. 
You know, in order to enjoy the consistent, persistent pursuit of your potential, you have to pay attention to and give intention to what we think, say, do, believe. Even our personality traits, characteristics, obsessions, and addictions, all directed towards what we want. Study what you want, what you have planned during the day. Study that with attention and intention. Study what you don't have planned in the day with attention and intention. Study the sleep that you have, the time when we have no interference, we don't create any interference or corrosion between us and what empowers us and if you do this if you have intention and attention to what you want the coincidences regardless of covid regardless of the economic circumstances we will only see pain as an indicator an indicator that you have something to learn mentally physically spiritually emotionally financially pain is an indicator it's a turn signal just telling you move in a different direction you'll find something better you'll be in a better situation the fourth thing to do is do it now. Be present. Ask yourself, can I do it now? If you can do it now, do it. 100% of the things you do now get done. It's the difference between successful, passionate, purposeful, and profitable people. They get things done. So do things now. Finally, be like me. Be a practice of quieting, a practice of ending fear. The practice of every day of finding when I'm an ego-based consciousness of fear, anxiety, worry, anger, frustration, separateness, inferiority, superiority, all of these different things, resentment, guilt, all of these different things accelerate us in the wrong direction. So practice ending those things in your life. Practice quieting your mind, allowing the great source of energy, love, light, and lessons to come through you with appreciation for everything you're connected to, everyone and everything that you want. And if you do this, I promise you, you will enjoy the pursuit of your potential and be happy. I'm glad that we're recording this because that was really, really beautiful, David. Really, really beautiful. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. And the fire in your eyes is visible. The, the tone, your everything is there. Your face is glowing with, with the words. So I, I can see that you meant them. And yeah, I want to ask you just one question before I let you go. And the last question I want to ask you is, where do you find this fire within you? Where is your inspiration coming from? When you wake up every morning, what's, what's getting you to go? You know, like everybody has a go thing. Mine is different than yours. But what's yours? I want to know about you. Yeah, my, mine is to meditate in the morning, to practice quiet, quieting things for me, to find my highest frequency as a baseline for the day mm -hmm. so that I can plateau and grow every day. Uh, I don't live the myth of Sisyphus. I don't push a boulder to the top of the hill every day just to have it start at the bottom of the hill the next day. So for me, it's that mm -hmm. meditation, the practice of quieting, the practice of my potential. And for me, you know, truly... Uh, it's a, a, a true routine to make sure I know that baseline and that I can help not only myself, but other people do the same. And that's why my mission in life is to find a thousand people like you, to empower another thousand people, to empower another thousand, just simply to be happy. The power of networking and growth. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, David, for coming live with me. And people who are going to watch, who watch him now, we're going to watch him in the future. Go follow David. He does a lot of trainings. He does a lot of coachings. And he's always putting out content, which is inspiring. And it's just amazing content. And just learn from David as much as you can. I can't thank you enough for coming live with me. And thank you. And thank you. Sending you my best wishes from India. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Uh, best to your kids and your family. And thank you again for coming live with me. Thank you. Be kind to your future self and do good deeds. Join me on Fridays, david at dmelzer.com if you want to contact me. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, David.